Hello, it's the middle of June and everything has been growing really, really well. As you can see, I'm in one of my greenhouses now and I am surrounded by my tomatoes. In the, I will show you how a few bits and pieces are getting on in the other greenhouse and a few odd bits outside. But everything, practically everything, I've got a few flowers and I've got a few um, uh, globe artichokes to dot around the gap of the garden so but generally speaking um, practically everything is in now let's start with the tomatoes as you can see they have nearly I would say that they've literally doubled in size since I saw you two weeks ago which is fabulous I just have to keep watering them so what I do because they're in the trays is I will half fill one of these trays with water. I will let all that water go and then I will uh, put some more in. So I don't keep the roots uh, wet all the time. They, do, they don't dry out, but they sort of have a little breather, which is a, a very good thing to do. If you do let them dry out completely for several days and then you give them a water, what you will find is that the skins of your tomatoes are then much thicker and you will also, your tomatoes will start, you'll, you'll get a split down them and you'll most probably uh, then get blossom end rot which is that sort of dark patch at the bottom. But what I want to show you today is about side shooting. <clears throat> now you don't have to side shoot all your tomatoes. If you're growing the bush varieties you don't um, side shoot those but if you're growing the cordon ones, this is a general rule, there's always exceptions to these rules, but if you're growing the cordon ones, so the ones that grow tall up a cane, <coughs> excuse me, then you will have to side shoot them. You can side shoot them and then plant the side shoot in another pot if you wish, but um, I usually just sort of get rid of it and pop it on the compost heap or in the, the garden waste. So sometimes I actually put it in the tray and then it gets wet and then a load of goodness goes in the water. So that's a good thing. But lots of flowers are starting to develop. Little baby tomatoes are starting to develop. But let me show you a little bit closer all about sight shooting. Now I'll just show you on this one plant here. Hopefully it will become clear. Now if you, if you start from the base and you work your way up. This is the main stem here. Okay, hopefully you can, you can see the main stem is coming up here. Now off of the main stem, you either get a leaf or you get, actually this one's, okay, you might be able to see that, or you get some fruit growing. Now the side shoot is the bit that comes in between the main stem and a leaf. So this little bit, I need more hands, so this little bit here which is in between the main stem and the leaf, that is the side shoot and you need to nip it off like that. Okay, there's another one up here so we'll follow the stem up. We've got a leaf coming out here and then in between the two we've got a side shoot. Okay, there's another little one here, okay, so we'll nip that out and then there's another one there and then there's another one there. Now if they are, if you can nip them out with your fingers then do, but if it's quite large use a pair of secateurs. Now you don't have to take out all of it, you, I mean I've, this one here, I've left a little stump, okay, don't worry about that. That bit won't grow again, but you will get another one that grows in a slightly different place. So just because you've removed this uh, side shoot from here, you are likely to get another one coming up. Now, uh, I've got some string here. I do need to tie in my tomatoes because they're getting quite large. So use a piece of string, get a nice length of string. Don't be stingy with it. Now there are various ways you can do that. You can either tie it round the, the stick, 
like that and then tie it round the tomato like that, nice and loosely, not tight at all. Because remember the stem will actually, as the plant gets bigger, the stem will grow. Now a lot of people do it this way, so you tie it round the stick and then you tie it round the stem and it basically it means that the stem won't hit the stick and it won't rub against it and it's got all of this space here to grow. Other people, just depends what you fancy, other people usually what I tend to do, if I do it down here, is I will just do it like that. So I will put it round the stick and the stem and just tie it loosely. It's always handy to do it just above a leaf because then it won't slip down. Okay, now normally I wouldn't do them this close together but obviously I wanted to show you. I would do one about four inches from the, the soil and then I'd most probably do them about every six inches and if you continue doing that all the way up until you don't want it to get any taller. And when we come to do that, which will most probably be in about four weeks time, then I will show you about nipping out the, the tip at the top. If you do find that any of these leaves start to go yellow or brown, then just nip them off, okay? It won't harm the plant at all. But hopefully you will get lots of fruit on yours. This section here where you do get a section it's called a truss. So this is my first truss and there are lots of other little flowers coming there as well. So I've got a second one just appearing actually just off camera so that will be the second one. Usually I would expect to get about three or four trusses per plant. Here are my melons. They're starting to <laughs> grow really well. Here we've got the little tendrils and what I want to try and encourage the plant to do is to grab onto the stick so that the stick will support it as it grows so that it doesn't actually go all over the place. So I will very carefully, like the tomatoes, tie these up. If you look, hopefully you can see I've got lots of flowers on here. Now some of these are male flowers and some of them are female flowers. Now it's only the female flowers that give off the babies. So the way to tell the difference is the male flowers have a very long stem before the flower. The female flowers, hopefully you can see that, have a very short stem before they have the flower. And if you look really carefully, you can see a baby melon there. Now, obviously they need to um, have a special little cuddle and um, then the two flowers can make a little baby. So if you are growing like me in the greenhouse, my door of my greenhouses are open all day. So lots of pollinators do come in. If however, you find that your female flowers aren't producing any babies then you may well have to get in and just give them a little helping hand so if you get a little paintbrush and you you tickle a male flower onto a female flower and uh, just sort of you know tickle lots and lots of flowers and then hopefully that will help them produce some babies here behind me i have got my aubergines which are growing really well and let's move over this way and here I've got, there's a couple of chilies. I've got loads of chilies down here and, and, and around. But these guys are doing really well. The aubergines are starting to produce flowers here. And again, if they don't start to uh, set, if behind the flower, if um, a fruit doesn't set, then I might have to get in here with a little brush and just give them a helping hand but the chilies are ever so slowly, they are starting to produce some flowers. One or two, I can see the tiny little buds starting to form. So hopefully in a couple of weeks, when I do the next update, there will be lots of flowers and I'll be able to show you. So let's go and have a look outside. Here I have got my garlic. Now I planted this garlic in autumn. So you know when it's ready to harvest because the leaves start to turn yellow. 
Now they're nearly turning. They've all got rust, but that's not a problem. It doesn't actually affect the bulb. So don't worry if you do get rust. Rust is lots of little sort of orangey spots on your, um, your garlic. It does tend to happen to leaks as well. But with garlic, it's not really a problem. Now, what I am going to do is I will dig one of these up just to show you, but I think I will most probably leave the rest of them just for a little bit longer. So let's choose this one here. As I say, I planted these in the autumn and they've been growing quite happily here. And so I have no idea what they're gonna be like under the ground. This is the first one of this year's that I have dug up. Ah, well, there we go. <laughs> there, that's a good size. And you can see underneath it has actually formed some nice cloves under there. I'm still using last year's garlic. So I'll take this one. Oh, it smells amazing. And I will leave, as I say, I will leave the other ones just for a little bit longer, most probably another couple of weeks, I guess. But uh, that's the first of the garlic. I've also been harvesting my some broad beans, not all of them, just the ones that are ready. And the best way to, to tell is to get hold of a pod and just to gently push it. And if you can feel the beans are, you know, a good size, then you can pull it off. If you want to wait for them to get a little bit bigger, then do. But we had some of these last night for dinner and they were so tasty. There we go. Oops, can you see that? There's three in there, they're all nice and soft. Actually, this is quite a small pod because I did pick one yesterday that had about eight in it. So, um, yes. But you also need to make sure because this is the time of year where the black fly will start. So what the black fly are after are the new green shoots. So once you start, your broad beans start to produce flowers and then fruit, all you need to do is to nip off the growing tip there. That's all you need to nip off um, because that's what the aphids are after. So you can either nip it off with your fingers or you can cut it off. If you do have a problem with aphids, you can either spray them with something that you buy in the store or you can get one of those little plastic spray bottles, put a tiny bit of washing up liquid in there, fill the rest of the bottle up with uh, cold water and then spray away. Only a very small amount of washing up liquid. Any washing up liquid will, uh, will do, so it's entirely up to you which one you want to use. Because they um, aphids breathe through their gills, the soapy water actually clogs up their gills and they can't breathe and they die. I know it sounds gross, but there we go. I have also been picking my Monge 2 and my Sugar Snap peas. They have been doing really well. So I come out every couple of days and I pick some for dinner. I've also been thinning out my carrots. So go along, if you've got a clump of them really close together, then just pull out, you know, some from that clump and they will be really small, but they will be really nice. Just, you know, cut them into chunks and have them uh, as a vegetable with your dinner. Don't throw them away, don't waste them. I'm not one for wasting. So brassicas are doing really well. Oh, everything's doing really well, but I just want to show you the very last thing I want to show you are my poppies. I absolutely love these. I think they are absolutely amazing. I want to show you these poppies because I absolutely love them. I think they look fantastic. I don't know what variety they are. My sister gave me a couple of seed heads uh, a couple of years ago. They were all dried and I just sprinkled them over in this area in the spring and they have come up like this. They are enormous. They must be about three feet tall, some of them. The heads are just, well, you can see they are just full and there are loads of little buds, other buds coming. So when, what I will do with these is when the heads have finished, I will cut the head with well, the seed pod off. 
You can either then cut it up into say four if you want and bury each section or you can leave the seed heads to dry in a cool place and then when the seed head is dry then you can knock all the seeds out and save those and then sprinkle them next year it's entirely up to you but i love these i think they are absolutely fabulous any poppies are gorgeous i love those the the sort of the papery petals that they have and they don't last very long but they are absolutely gorgeous so if you can get some poppies any ones if you know a friend of yours has some of those then maybe you can swap some seed heads with them um, if you want if you want that I don't know whether I can email them out to you uh, I can uh, send them out to you but anyway we'll see you can always send me a message um, and then maybe I'll see what I can do. I don't know if I'll be able to do it to anywhere that's not in the UK though. So, um, but anyway, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So I just wanted to show them to you because I think they're so pretty. Anyway, I've, as you can see, I've got an awful lot to get on with. I've got loads of side shooting to do, loads of tying in, but the garden is doing really well and it's great because I'm starting to harvest stuff. Well, I hope you are doing really well in your garden and I hope you're enjoying harvesting all sorts of bits and pieces. I did harvest the first of the uh, first early potatoes yesterday and they were the most Moorish thing I have ever tasted. Well, I hope you found what I've shown you useful and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.